The point is, it's important that you are contributing as an individual in that meeting your two items, even if they match somebody else's two items. That's not the issue. The issue is you're putting your items in, you're getting used to yellow hat thinking. Welcome to Innovation Talks. Join us weekly as we discuss with distinguished industry guests how to refine and improve corporate innovation and new product development. Hosted by Paul Heller, Sophion Chief Evangelist. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. Glad you could join me again. Have you ever been in a meeting and the conversation jumps around and one minute you're talking about an idea and then all of a sudden you're, somebody's expressing their feelings about the idea and the idea is almost killed before you really brought out the facts about the idea or somebody brings up another idea and you jump over to it? Have you ever left a meeting feeling that some topics, some great topics were brought up and then not adequately discussed and, and, and then the meeting drifted on and you never got back to them? Well, something to think about, maybe try, is something called the six thinking hats. The six thinking hats, the concept was invented by Edward de Bono. And he's credited with inventing a term called lateral thinking. And he spends a lot of his time and effort thinking about how to make thinking more of a process, more of a way of, of, of executing, uh, a way of being. So thinking as a process. So he came up with this concept of six thinking hats. And it's been used surprisingly for a long time, although I just found out about it. It's been used by many companies around the world very successfully. There are six hats, and each hat has a color. And when you are wearing a hat, you're in a certain mode of thinking. So just to introduce those hats to you, and then I'll give you some examples. The blue hat is about organization, structure and organization. The white hat if you think about white, what is it? It's, it's facts, the white, the lab coat, the, the white room. So the white hat represents known facts. The red hat is about feelings, right? Emotions and feelings. The yellow hat, think about the sun being yellow. You know, the sun is yellow. That's about feeling good and recognizing the good in something. The black hat, the dark hat, is about the concerns, your worries and your concerns. And the green hat thinking is about, uh, think about the grass, the flowers, everything green coming up. It's about new ideas, how to make things better. So if you've got a meeting with a group of people and you put them into the different modes of thinking, it allows you to focus. So if you really do want to focus on the facts only, you put the white hat on. Everybody puts the white hat on. And now you're really focused on facts. And if somebody tries to slide in a concern, you say, well, no, that's black hat thinking. Hold that until we wear our black hats. We want to finish the white hat and get through all the things we know about this topic. Then eventually we will get into our black hat for concerns. So it brings a structure that is really effective. And actually having people physically put on a hat gets them mentally and emotionally into that type of thinking, right? So, okay, we're, I've got my red hat on now, so I'm doing my feelings, my emotional thinking. I've got my green hat on, so I'm into thinking about new ideas and how to make things better. And it, it brings a structure when everybody in the meeting has the same colored hat. So I'll give you two examples, one for particularly for something that just happened in Sophion, and then I will uh, give you an example for innovation. But you know, before I go into that, I mentioned it brings structure. But it also brings fairness and balance because you're in these meetings and there might be dominant personalities and the dominant personality might throw an emotion in there or a concern in there and then everybody jumps over to it. And maybe the less dominant personalities are less willing to uh, maybe express concerns 
so when the, the hats are on, it brings this, uh, this fairness and this balance. And here's how it worked for us going through our quarterly review in Sophion. So every quarter, we always have a review, and we have our functional leaders, sales, marketing, finance, product development, et cetera, would go through uh, their strategic plan elements. So we just did it to close out Q1. So each functional leader goes through Q1 and gives a overview of what they got done and how they did against their initiatives and their plan. And then we'll give a, a, a report on Q2 and what their plan is for Q2. So discuss Q1 and then discuss Q2. And we always did this with PowerPoint presentations and the typical meeting structure. And this time, our CEO, Greg Kotikia, said, let's try the six hats thinking. So for this exercise, he wore the blue hat. There's only one blue hat, he wore it. So he organized the way it was going to work, and he organized the switching of the hats. And the rest of us, we chose at this point to, to just use yellow, black, and green for this exercise. So Greg would say, okay, first functional area, get up and do a presentation. And the presentation, by the way, was not an hour-long slide deck. The slide deck was handed out ahead of time. It was a 30-second or a one-minute summary of Q1 achievements, Q2 plans. And so if we'd all read the homework, done the homework and read this, the prepar preparatory material, we would have known what that functional area was going to say. So sales gets up, in our case, North American sales. He gave his overview of Q1, his results, and then he gave his plan for Q2. So Greg asked everybody to put on the yellow hat. Now we're all wearing the yellow hat. And he asked each of us to contribute one or two good points, one or two uh, recognizing good things that were done in Q1 for, for that functional area, in this case, North American sales. And so we all did that. And each person had to come up with one or two, but it was okay to bring up one that somebody else had already said, or even if both of yours had already raised. The point is, it's important that you are contributing as an individual in that meeting, your two items, even if they match somebody else's two items. That's not the issue. The issue is you're putting your items in, you're getting used to yellow hat thinking. Then after we got that done, we switched to the black hats. And now we're focused on Q2. So the yellow hat was about Q1, recognizing the good. Now the black hat is expressing concerns coming out of Q1, looking at our Q2 plan, what are we worried about? And each person, again, in the meeting, had to contribute to, well, it maybe it was one, two, three, but some number of black hat concerns. And we went around the room. Each person would put their two in there. And so it's really interesting when you're in the mode of black hat thinking and you're wearing the black hat and everybody's wearing the black hat, if you're a person that shies away from saying, well, I worry about this when somebody else, because it's, you're worried that somebody's going to jump down your, 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 jump on your back because you expressed a worry, you, it, that goes away. It's a safe place. We've all got our black hats on. We're expressing our worries. If somebody gets, you know, stands up and said, well, Paul, you're crazy. That would never happen. The, Greg wearing his blue hat would say, well, hang on, that's a red hat emotion or that's a red hat thinking. Save that. We're in black hats right now. So it brings a really neat structure. And then after that, so we've gone through Q1, yellow, we recognize what was good. Q2, black, we got out our concerns. Now we put our green hats on. And what Greg asked, and it was a stroke of genius, was I want each functional leader to contribute one or two, he said actually two, to contribute two ideas, two things they could do to help that functional area who just presented, who we're discussing, be more successful in Q2. This encouraged a tremendous amount of cross-functional support, alignment. So here's North American sales, 
and he's putting his Q2 plan in there, and here's product development, and they are thinking, wow, what one or two things could I do to help North American sales achieve their Q2 objective? And then it happened for the next functional area, in European sales, and then finance, and HR, etc. So by doing this, this cycle of review Q1, Q2, then yellow, black, and green, so recognize the good, express the concerns, think about how you can help, was just tremendous for us to build cross-functional alignment around our plan, around our Q2 plan, to build cross-functional team working, to have a safe, structured discussion. It was just a phenomenal experience for us. So then we got into strategy, and we got into talking about our, our longer-term strategy. We have some real specific strategic topics to talk about. Then we wore all the hats, and I started thinking this would be really good for innovation. So imagine an innovation session, and you wanted to go through this. So somebody's going to wear the blue hat and organize that innovation session, and then uh, might tell everybody, well, put on your white hats. What do we know? Let's focus on the facts. Let's focus on what we know. And you might spend five or ten minutes just focused on what you know. And if anybody tries to slide in an idea or express a concern, you, you say, no, we have our white hats on. That's not what we're doing. We'll do that later. So it forces this structured thinking. And then uh, maybe after that, okay, we know what we knew. You might have a short red hat session on how you feel about that. Right? And then maybe you put your yellow hats on and you recognize the good about where we're at, what we know, what's good about it. Maybe you put your black hats on and you express your concerns. Uh, maybe then you put your green hats on and you start thinking about ideas. And the dominant personality in there who, who maybe wants to start picking apart an idea can't because we have our green hats on. We're going to pick it apart. We'll do our concerns later. So we've got green hats on. And then maybe we'll go back to black hats and then black to red hats and then maybe to yellow and back to green. So this, this thinking brings this structure. And in an ideation session, it will be really fun to try. And I'm looking forward to actually trying it in some of our future ideation sessions. Uh, it brings a great structure. It's a pretty easy read, the book although the theory behind it is rather advanced, but you don't need to know the theory to successfully use it. What you do need is somebody who really understands it well to wear that blue hat. I think that an organization, if somebody studies the book, really reads it inside and out, end to end, they would be qualified to wear that blue hat. But if you felt you weren't, there are probably consultants out there who could wear the blue hat. But um, we, it was a prerequisite for us going into this meeting that everybody read the book. So we didn't have to spend time at the beginning of the meeting explaining the hats. And as I said, it's an easy read. So if you do, do decide to use it for innovation, you know, get copies of the book and pass them out. Pass them out to all the participants and say, hey, before we go into our innovation session, read this book because we're going to use this technique. So... I hope you enjoyed that little overview of Six Thinking Hats. I sure enjoyed trying it out and look forward to trying it again. I believe it's going to be a regular way of business, regular, a regular way of operating at Sophion now. Uh, so it'll be fun. Uh, maybe I can report back later this year on how it's going. But uh, take a look. Edward De Bono, Six Thinking Hats. I wish you all a great day. Thanks for joining. And... Until next time, I wish you successful innovation. Bye for now. Thanks for joining us this week for Innovation Talks with Paul Heller. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple, or wherever you listen to podcasts. For additional information on today's topic, check out sophion.com, S-O-P-H-E-O-N.com, where you will find plenty of innovation-centric content and corporate best practices. If you'd like to discuss anything with Paul or would like to get in touch with the show, email us at talks at sophion.com.